that I am strong and it means that I am empowered and it means that I have a community of billions of people across the world who undergo similar challenges to me. For me to be a firefighter means for me to be able to use the physical ability that I was privileged to have to help me. I don't even know what else to say. My name is Alana Scardino. I am a volunteer lieutenant firefighter on Engine 3, the town of Amherst Student Force. When firefighting first started in the U.S., it was uh, Irish men did it, and that was that sort of kept a tradition. Tradition is also a big thing in the fire service. I think a lot of that limitations of why women are in these spaces is because it's not something that we're socialized from the beginning to know that that is something that we can obtain. I don't think that any young child knows that there are gender roles expected of them, and that's the whole point of gender roles is that they're just something that's innate within society that we don't realize is even happening around us. I honestly can't say that I ever felt self-conscious about being interested in masculine things. I kind of saw me being interested in masculine things as like badass a little bit in a way. I don't know if I ever really thought that I was different than anybody else. I was just doing my own thing and I think everybody else was doing their own thing and we were all just, I don't know, just being kids. I remember during my junior year playing soccer I saw the football players before they would leave to go to practice and then just get really jealous, like, oh man, I want to play football, I think that would be so cool, that would be so awesome. Um, so one day I asked my athletic director, I was like, is it possible to do that, what happened? He kind of laughed at me, he was not my favorite athletic director, but he did give me the contact information for the football coach. He seemed supportive of me from the start. Um, he had played hockey in high school right around when Title IX first became a thing, and uh, a girl had joined his high school hockey team uh, when he was in high school. So he was kind of understanding of that push for women to play men's sports when they don't have those opportunities on their end. So that was kind of the first step of me taking the leap of being the first girl in the city of Rochester to play football. We always had an appreciation for firefighters instilled in us. I think my parents being from New York, they always kind of held firefighters and first responders close to their heart. I remember being a little kid, we used to make cookies and bring them to the fire station on 9-11 just to show our appreciation, um, just to kind of give something back. And I remember being a little kid, a couple of the years we would get to go in the engine, uh, look around, uh, we were really welcomed into that space, that firehouse by those firefighters in the city of Rochester, which has always stuck with me. Um, so I've always had that appreciation. As far as an interest in firefighting, it's never something that I ever thought I would do. Uh, it's never something that I ever thought I would have the opportunity to do, or something, honestly, that I was capable of doing. My journey with Engine 3 started about my third day on campus. I saw a little demonstration of how to use a fire extinguisher, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome, there's real flames over there, I'm gonna go put out that fire. Um, so I saw that, and then I looked to my left, right next to them is a big old engine and some college-age kids wearing this whole uniform, and I was immediately intrigued, I was like, what's happening over here? And I read their little sign, and there were a lot of words on it, but the only thing I really saw that made an impact was student firefighters. So I walked right up and I was like, what is this? What is this? This looks amazing. They explained the whole process to me, they explained what Engine 3 was. Um, and I asked them, I was like, do you have to be a big, strong guy to do this? He was like, nope. All you have to do is be able to hold this. He handed me an ax, and I could hold it. So he told me I was qualified. And from then on, the rest is history. Being able to be that person and fill that role is something that, even though I never envisioned myself doing it, when I learned that I had the opportunity to fill that role, I definitely couldn't turn the other way. So Alana and I met probably sometime last year when she started running on Engine 3. And immediately I knew she was special. So she got off her probationary checklist first before anyone else. Um, so she she just went after it. She's hungry. She wants to learn. She wants to be successful. And she just goes after it. You and put then, one arm through the legs and one arm like under Are we doing under here? She, she doesn't see any ceiling. She doesn't see any boundaries. She just goes and powers through everything. It can be tricky in the beginning to get started in something that you've never done before. 
that is a very broad statement that can apply to a whole bunch of careers. I think with firefighting, being from an athletic background has been a major asset because you're used to going through like preseason, you're used to going through camps and a lot of those trainings can kind of feel like that sometimes. So one of the career firefighters in Amherst calls us tactical athletes and as much as that sounds kind of goofy, it's true. It is kind of like a football practice or a soccer practice or coming out and doing a sports practice when we train um, because it is high intensity um, and really physical. You got it. use your body. Instead of using your arms, stand up and walk with it. If you don't have that background, that's okay. But her background definitely helped her out here, especially with the team environment too. The thing with firefighting that set it apart was I was motivated to learn things uh, just from an intellectual like fire IQ level uh, because those are things that are going to keep you safe and help keep other people safe. Whereas if you're going through like an athletic camp, that is something like you're going through getting your body in shape, you're working, you're learning how to make your technique better and make your skills better. But maybe some things won't resonate to you as much because the stakes aren't as high. I think she was quicker than most. She was she was very well in and, um, and as one of the people that we went to. Being her roommate and just being her friend, she's awesome. She's always super supportive of you know everything that we're doing. She's funny. She can you know crack a joke. But at the same time, when we're working, totally professional. The best quote I ever got was my mom from my mom because there was an article written about her a while ago um, and it was something along the lines of oh that's Supergirl Alana and that's just sort of how I think about her now it's just that she's always always running. One of my coaches when I started playing football he didn't want me anywhere near the field he didn't think that women belonged even on the sideline as like assistants or anything like that um, he thought it was cool if they were going to be in the stands as fans um, but he didn't think that they were meant to play the game, firefighting. It's the same situation as a woman who's never played football before going and joining her high school football team. Um, there's adversity because you've never played football before and you maybe don't know the skills and there's a whole bunch that goes into it, both socially and physically. But if you work hard, you can prove to yourself and to everybody else that you are just as capable as anybody else who would put on that helmet and shoulder pads. It's not a job that discriminates. Uh, if you can do the job, if you put the people first, we'll take you. That's the thing. Like, if you're here to serve the community and serve the people, that's all that's what matters. The fire doesn't really care, so why should we? We all see each other as, you know, siblings. Um, and I use that term, not brother and sister, but siblings, because, again, we're, you know, we're here spending time together. Um, there, there's, there's no reason why we should treat anybody different. The foundation that Engine 3 has, we are so connected, we are such a family, we love each other so much and I think that I can't say the same is true on every department across country, I can't say that's the same on every single team or every single business, um, but as far as being here, I'm glad that the network that we have is so strong. Going through, I, I, am, I am so for diversity in, in, in the fire service. I think it's incredibly important to get different perspectives in the firehouse because again, this is this is your family and this is people you want to be spending a ton of time with. Um, so uh, as long as you're equipped to do the job, I am I'm so for the and anyone being on my fire engine. I'm very extremely proud of the fact that for this upcoming recruit class, we have, we recruited an equal amount of women and men, which I've never seen, I think out of like 10 recruits, there were originally five women and five men. When I was a recruit, there was one. I think it kind of, it's like a wave effect, you know, as soon as like more and more people get into it, the more you see it, the more you hear about it. Growing up as a little girl, I didn't see any you know, female firefighters. But I think over the last few years, I do see more and more and more, and I think that's kind of helps put the idea into people's head, and especially like little girls' head. When I first started recruiting, and I'd be at the table with a big, you know, group of guys, and you'd ask women, you know, oh, hey, do you want to be a firefighter? And they say, oh, you know, I'm not strong enough, I don't. But they see women like Alana doing this tabling, Oh, they, they, they sort of see a role model in, in that position. I don't know who doesn't want to be a firefighter. Deep down, I can't imagine what my life would be like without it. I can't imagine not having this in my life. I can't imagine not knowing these people. I can't imagine not having these experiences. Um, 
from a social level, just like getting to interact with all of these people who I call my family, who I am so close with, who I see every single day, who I live with, who I go through emotional things with. Um, it's, I can't even fathom missing out on that. And honestly, I'm like, I feel bad for people who don't get to experience this sometimes. This is a great job. Like, I'm super passionate about this job. I want to do this for the rest of my life. And a lot of people on the department want to do that. Um, and as long as you have the passion drive and care about the people, that's all this is. My pitch, it's simple. You can do it. <laughs> that's basically the pitch. Being a woman is one of the greatest superpowers in the world. Um, we're able to overcome things that not everybody can, both physically and socially. It means that I might have to prove myself, but I know that I'm capable of doing it. You might not have people that believe in you. Your parents might not believe in you. Your best friends might not believe in you. But as long as you believe in you, and you know what you're made of, and you know that you're tough, and you know that you can work hard, you can truly do anything.